Hey, this is Rob from GTRpodcast.com and in this video I'm going to have a solo play of Super Hot the Card Game, show you all the highlights and all the stuff you need to know in order to play the game, and then at the end I'll give you my summary and including all the positives and all the negatives. So this is a deck building game, it's based on a computer game that's a first person shooter, hence all the shooting and the computer style graphics. And the goal of the game is to complete these missions up here. So in level one, there'll be one mission. When I complete that, I say when, if I complete that, that one will go away, two more will come out. And if I complete those two, three more will come out. If I complete all three of those, then I win. There's lots and lots of ways you can lose the game. If you ever can't draw up to four cards from your deck, you lose. If you ever can't refill up this line of cards, you lose. If you've ever got four bullets in your hand at any one time, you lose. If this bullet deck runs out, you lose. Now, I've played this a couple of times already. I'm not very good at it. I have yet to complete a single mission. So hopefully I'll do better with the uh, pressure of me filming myself. So let's give this a go. So the board is set up. The mission is there. The first one I need to complete. You do get the chance to veto a mission when one comes out. And I did in this case. I can't remember what the one it was. But the one that you veto, you put back on top and you just draw the next one. Uh, and this one says, hold a card of each type in your hand. And the types of cards are shown on the bottom so here I've got two of these QB things and here I've got two of the people things I just need two more I need a bullet so I need to get shot at some point and I need this flip the table card so hopefully I can get that so I can get this symbol there's a couple more there as well so that's cool should be able to get some of those so there's seven phases in a round and the first phase is to wait or move now this is because in the computer game it's because it's a first person shooter the bad guys only move when you move I haven't played it I have seen it being played and it's really cool how that works and this simulates this so if you move you're then going to play cards and try to defeat some of these guys however in this game if you wait you can discard any non-bullet cards from your hand into the discard pile this is the obstacle discard pile over here and then the last card of the obstacle line will go into your discard pile it's kind of weird how it works because your deck and this row are constantly going to be cycling around as the game goes on but you'll see it's it's weird it's unique definitely unique so yeah, wait or move, I'm going to move straight away. And the second phase is use cards. And there are two types of currencies in, the, in this game. There's the red kind of stop symbols, which are attack. And there are the gray triangles, which are dodge. And then there's the red stop symbol with a gray triangle, which is both. So when you're looking at cards, when they're in the hand, you're going to use this top section. Some of them at the top have an ability, like this plan here, where it says draw two cards. When they're in the middle, you're looking at the bottom bit. This is what you need to defeat them. And this is what they're going to do at the end of the round. So I want this symbol, so I need two attack cards. So I'm going to take these two punches. They have two attack. They go into the used cards area. Now when you defeat a card, you've got two options. You can either destroy it or knock it out. If you knock it out, all you do is you flip it face down. And then at the end of the round, it's going to go into the obstacles discard pile out of your way. But I want this card, so I'm going to put this in the new card area. These are cards that are going to go into my hand for the next round it's important to note that when you're buying cards or defeating cards should i say from the middle you can't overspend so you have to spend exact if you've got it so the cards remaining in play are too expensive they all cost three i've only got two dodge so i can't get any more cards so that ends my used cards fade so the next phase is called refill your hand you take any cards from the new card area they go in your hand and you draw a new one to fill your hand back up to four cards Next up is the manoeuvres phase, and this is determined by how many cards you've used, so you would line them up if you want to, I mean you can obviously count, I'm just going to line them up to show you. Any cards that are in these last two slots, because I played two cards, will go into my discard pile because they're face up. Had I knocked them down, um, knocked them out earlier I mean, so they were face down, they would go into this discard pile, but because they're both face up, these two go into my discard pile. And then the cards that I used will go into the obstacles discard pile out the way the next phase is to check goals i've got four cards i've got three of the symbols i need i've got the little dude symbol i've got whatever that is and i've got this little box i just need a bullet uh, in my hand but obviously my hand's going to change a lot so hopefully i can get it soon and then i can actually finally complete an objective that would be amazing next is the obstacle abilities phase and this is where you activate cards in the line that are left these two have no abilities, so they don't do anything. This one says discard a card from your hand except for a bullet. So I'm going to discard this punch card. Then the final phase of a turn is to refill the line. And just like most games, you just slide all these cards up 
and you reveal new ones from the top. Let's see what we've got. We've got a shotgun, uh, another shotgun, and a plan. Okay, so that's what I've got to face on the next round. Still trying to get this goal here. And that's how a round of Super Hot the card game is played. So I'm going to continue playing and we'll come back to the game when I do something different. Okay, we're back in the game. It's just the next round. Nothing interesting's happened. I've just defeated this one card here, but I just wanted to show you the maneuvers phase because something's happened that's different to what happened last time. So this time there's a gap. I've played three cards. One, two, three. So one, two, three are going to go. It doesn't matter that this slot is empty. It's still the three cards. So you don't skip it. You just get rid of these three cards here. So these two will go into my discard pile. And the three used cards will go into the obstacle discard pile. Uh, the next step is to check the goal. I haven't checked that, so um, let's just continue with the game. So the next step is the obstacle abilities, and this time some of the obstacles left do have abilities. We've got these two guys with a shotgun here, so they shoot two bullets each. So that would be four bullets on the bullet deck. One, two, three, four. And they go into the obstacle discard pile, so they will come back to haunt me at some point. But it's not all bad. I do have a plan here to a pillar to hide behind sorry so that lets me draw a card can't draw a card from my deck so just like most deck building games you shuffle your discard pile and then you draw one and i have drawn how about a glass so i've got a nice glass there to to take and then your deck obviously goes back onto your deck there okay i'll come back in a bit okay we're back i've played a few more rounds um i haven't done the goal yet I need to basically cycle this deck round to get the bullets out into this middle so I can get them in my hand. That's the only way I'm going to be able to complete that objective. Um, I'm just stopping now because obviously I can't refill this row because the obstacle deck's empty. So you probably knew this, but you shuffle the obstacles discard deck. Shuffle it quite well because all the bullets are being clumps. And then you put it down and refill the row as normal. Easy peasy. Let's see what we've got. Just a normal punch. There's a lot of bad guys there. I'm going to have a lot of bullets, I think. Okay, back to the game. Okay, I've advanced a couple more rounds. I did say shuffle the deck well so the bullets don't come out in clumps. Well, there's four. I did say I needed some. I didn't quite need this many, but I need to get rid of some now. So hopefully I can do that. So here I can use the katana. It gives me two attack bosses. It says, or destroy a flying bullet. So I'm going to get rid of this one. That goes into back into the bullet deck. I'm going to use a shotgun to get this katana. I'm going to spend a shotgun to knock out this. No, I'm not. I'm going to take this punch into my used card area, new card area. Okay, so I get to refill my hand now. So I'm going to take these two into my hand. That gives me three. So I draw a fourth card, which is a plan. And now maneuvers. So I remove three cards. That's these three bullet cards, and these all go into my hand. I was one bullet away from losing the game there. So that was close, and then these get discarded to this pile over here. I checked the goal. I've nearly done it. I'm just one cube card short, which is a shame. I was, I was so close. Then I look at obstacle abilities that are none, and then I have to refill the line. So, okay, let's go back to the game. Okay, folks, I'm in brand new territory with this game. I have completed a goal yes finally after three games i've managed to do it that's great so now what you do is you level up the first thing you do is you shuffle the obstacle deck the obstacle discard and all the cards in the line into a new deck you then shuffle the same way the player discard pile the player deck and the player hand into a new deck and draw four cards and then you get rid of this goal and you add two new ones and you can still veto one but you can't veto one you've already vetoed which I, i'd already defeat the destroy two flying bullets in a turn so this is add five new cards to your hand from either drawing or destroying obstacle cards in the line i'll keep that in just in case okay we're back i've played uh, quite a bit probably about 10 15 minutes maybe Something like that. I'm not. I didn't really count, but I managed to complete a goal. I got the draw. Add five cards to your hand from either drawing or destroying obstacles in the line. That was quite easy. I did that very quickly. I couldn't get two flying bullets. I couldn't get two bullets in that line at the same time to be able to complete that, which was a shame. But what actually happened was I've only got one card in my hand. I've only got two cards in the new card area, and my deck is empty. I ran out of cards. I wasn't paying attention, and so I can't refill my hand. So I lose. So. 
Yeah, let's go to the uh, positives and the negatives. So the first positive, obviously, it's a very unique game. The way you have these cards on the obstacle deck, which go into different piles depending what you do with them. Sometimes they go face down, they go over here. Sometimes you destroy them, they come here and they're going straight into your hand. It's good. I like that. It gives you something to think about, especially when you're trying to look at this row and thinking, okay, how many cards do I need to play so I can get rid of from here? What are these cards up here? Do I need to buy them now or shall I wait for them to move down a bit? There's some good choices. Very, very interesting to play. The next thing is the art style that I really like. It's just very nice. I like this look. It's based on the computer game, as I said at the beginning of the video, and it's just good. It makes me want to play the computer game. I'm supposed to get a, a code for it, I think, because I've had the Kickstarter, so I'm looking forward to that coming. Um, but yeah, I really like this artwork, and the cards aren't too bad. Speaking of components, let's have a look at the bottoms. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. The tiny little bit of whiting, but as I said, three or four games of it, that's not too bad for a deck builder. I've not sleeved them yet, but I will be sleeving them after this video, because I think I'm going to keep this one as a bit of a spoiler for my summary, but yeah. It's, uh, it's not too bad, the components are nice. If you saw my unboxing video that I did about a week or so ago, you'll know that this mat doesn't come with the retail version of the game. It, you can buy it separately, I believe. Um, it does come with this one. It's not quite as impressive. It's paper. It's a third of the size, but it's functional. It does the job. It gives you all the areas that you need to, to know, and that's the important part. But uh, that's the paper mat that you get in the game. On to the negatives, and one of them is the fact that the game is unique and plays differently to other games. It does make it difficult sometimes to follow this and remember the difference. I personally have problems with the difference between manoeuvres, as in where do the cards go, depending whether they're face up, face down, etc. Because it's different and because things, some things go here, some things go there. Sometimes I was getting that wrong. It's probably my fault more than the games, but still, it, you know, it's something I was having trouble with. Uh, and the other one is obstacle abilities because they're not very well explained what they do when they're activating in the middle there. Which brings me to the final um, negative, the rule book. It's good, it teaches you the rules, which is what a rule book should do, but unfortunately it doesn't go into specific details. It does have some examples, but I had a lot of questions that the rule book didn't answer. Um, hopefully Board Game Geek will um, when I look them up, but uh, yeah. That is the final negative. So to sum up, yeah, I think this is a really good game. It's a decent deck builder. It's uh, nice and quick, really. It was only about 40 minutes from a first full game that actually lasted more than a couple of rounds because I was just getting stuff wrong. My deck was running out far too quick when I was playing it pro uh, properly the first couple of times. So this time I, had, I put more thought into it. I knew what I was doing. I was able to last a bit longer. I still didn't manage to get to level 3, but I did manage to get to level 2 for the first time, so that's a bonus. But, yep, this is going on my shelf. It's a tiny little box, as you can see. It's not very big. It's one of those small ones that you can just stick in there. It doesn't take up too much room. That's that's cool. Just roll the playmat up and put it in the drawer with all my others. And I look forward to playing this uh, with two or three players. That would be uh, a lot of fun. I think you play sort of co-op in a two-player game, and in a three-player game you play two versus one. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that changes the game. So that is super hot, a nice solo one to three player deck building game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it and subscribe to the channel for more solo playthrough videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast, you can find my blog and podcast at jtrpodcast.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and I'll see you soon.